The equilateral triangles were designed to uh, go out in the tinker yard and be sculptural elements for the, for the garden bench. The garden bench is very structurally sound and does what it needs to do, but it needs to relate more to what, what the other elements of the tinker yard. And the equilateral red triangles are a big part of that. So the lesson today having to do with uh, the equilateral triangles was primarily designed to tell them how you make an equilateral triangle and that you need to pay attention to the length of the sides and the angles themselves. Uh, that's how you get an equilateral triangle. And the next step would be then to measure out the sections, uh, get the angles correctly positioned, and make the cuts, and then screw the pieces together. Boys and girls, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about triangles. Raise your hand if you know what a triangle looks like. Oh, I'm so happy you know what a triangle looks like. All right, show me that you're ready. Now, um, Mr. Mather happens to be holding one in his hand. Uh, it's nice to work in a place where I have visuals to share with you. Um, and this is one that um, we have made in advance of our conversation today. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a special type of triangle. But first, let's talk about some qualities of triangles before we get started. Um, who can tell me, Josh, how many sides are there to a triangle? Three. Three, okay. I'm glad we know that. Now, um, you may not know uh, there's, some, there's some information about triangles that you guys aren't supposed to know yet, but I'm going to give you some secrets about them, okay? I'm going to give you some secrets. I'm going to let you in on some of my secrets because guess what? Yes, I see I've got a poster about triangles in here. You guys didn't know this, but this is also math class, right? Yes, okay, right? yep, yep. We learn yeah. math in here too. STEAM is by nature integrated and the students benefit when all of the parts play nicely together. In the real world, at least my advisory board members tell me that in the real world, when you go to do a project, uh, if you're an architect or you're a shoe designer and you're designing something, you don't say, oh, I'm gonna do the math part today. When you get to the measurement portion for your shoe, you have to do the math part, you know, and, and all the parts come together um, and it's not segmented out. It, it's very, uh, for lack of a better word, integrated. It, it, and that's what I want our students to see, that they're learning all of the things for a reason and they're all going together to produce something, create something, to change the world, to make it a better place. Basically, um, we're learning a special type of math called geometry. I did not learn geometry until I was in eighth or ninth grade, and everybody made it into something really, really like I was going to be scared of, and, but I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And one of the things I loved about it is it was the math that was the easiest for me to actually put my hands on and understand. So I really, really liked it. But there are some things that you have to understand, even when you can put your hands on the math. There's some things that you just have to accept. And one of those things is that triangles have angles. And it's actually in the word tri, what's the second part? Angle. Angle, okay. Now, what does tri mean? Uh, Biko? Three. Three. All right, Biko. Okay, so how many? angles are there? Three. three. Three, exactly, exactly. So we have three angles and Joshua already told us there are three sides. Now, I want to ask you some questions here. This triangle here, I'm going to put here, and actually I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see more of our, you may have to move us up just a little bit here. That, that helps. Okay, and center us back up a little bit. Okay, so we've got this triangle here and one of the things about triangles is not all triangles look exactly the same. It's another reason why I love geometry is because there's a lot of, let's change colors here. Um, there are a lot of, there's a lot of room for differences in the way that they look. Some can be long and skinny, okay? They can have different, different looks to them, okay? Now, why is this one different from this one, other than the fact that it's long and skinny. What's different about it? 
Uh, Tyler, real nice and loud. It's longer and bigger. It's longer? Okay, so can you give me a little bit more information? What parts of it are longer? Um, the two sides are longer than the bottom one short. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Now, two of the sides are really, really long and one of them is short. So that's what causes that triangle to look a little bit different, okay? Now, there's also something that you guys aren't supposed to know quite about yet. And that's a word I didn't learn until I was a lot older than you. And that's a word called angles. And those are the measurements in between the lines. So everybody, make an alligator mouth like that. You have just made an angle. Where your head is, nod your head, that's the angle, okay? Where your head is bobbing up and down, that's your angle. All right, show me that you're ready. So you have an understanding now of how many sides are in a triangle. You have an understanding of what an angle is. It's that space, it's a measurement of space. And Mr. Mather and I are here today to talk about a special type of triangle that we're gonna use in the garden bench a special type of triangle that we're going to use in the garden bench to actually um, add to, because we've already used it in the tinker yard a little bit in other places with other classes. Um, so we want to make sure that we're, we're using that similar repetitive shape again. Okay, so you want to pick up? Yeah, I do, because um, one thing I love about being in Miss Bryant's lab is that she has a lot of good tools. She has power tools, she has bench tools, sanders, drill press, bandsaw, and that's what I need to know how to use to make these kinds of triangles. So Ms. Bryant, do you have a tool here in your lab that helps us to find angles and make angles? I do, I do. Has, it, um, has anybody ever seen a tool like this before? Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad that you've seen a tool like this before. Does anybody know what this tool does? What does this tool do? Ellis, what does it do? It kind of helps you where you need to see where you need to cut and... Yes, it does. It helps us see where we need to cut and stuff, okay? So, specifically, do you notice how it has an arm? Yes. It does kind of like what you were doing. Do that with me. Does <laughs> yeah. that, okay? It does the same thing. This little arm, and if you notice, look at the little center part here. What does that represent? What does that represent? That little center part right here, there's a little hole in it. I'm going to put it up on the screen so you can see can it. Put I'm the gonna triangle use back? My pink one. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's a little hole right there in the center. And I'll give you a hint. Your head, when it was bobbing up and down, you notice your head is the exact same shape. Okay. What does that represent? What does that represent? Uh, Elias. Angles. The angle. That's right. That's right. So this right here, that little space in there tells us what the angle is. Does everybody see that tiny little pink dot on there? Yeah. That is an arrow that points to a number on here. And that number, and we can zoom in so that you can see it a little bit better, but that number tells us how big the angle is. Now there's something else I'm full of nuggets today that you're not supposed to know. And this one actually uh, shows the numbers a little oh, bit better. Oh, I will. You're right. Okay, so um, the numbers are on here. And there's something that you need to know. And I actually may need some help with this in just a second. So I want you to watch for me. Okay, watch. Show me that you're ready real quick. Because we're going to do some body movement in just a second. Show me that you're ready, please. Thank you. All right, so what we are going to do is we're going to learn about how many degrees are in a triangle, okay? Um, you've heard me when you're in line, we're lined up in the hallway and I say turn 180 degrees. I had to explain to you what that means. What does that mean, Joshua, when I say turn 180 degrees? <laughs> turn around, okay? Now, I'm going to blow your mind here for a second. All triangles, it doesn't matter what they look like, all of them have 180 degrees. Now, it doesn't mean they turn around in space. It means that when I add up this angle right here with this angle right here, ooh, goodness, okay, and this angle and this angle, if I add up all three of those, it will equal 180. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show that physically real quick here. Um, so this is A, we're gonna call it A, 
This is B and this is C, okay? If I add up angle A, angle A plus angle B plus angle C, it's going to equal what? What's it going to equal? Susanna? 180. Yes, ma'am. 180. Right, Every single time. Now, and that's something that you just have to know. You just have to learn that. Now, I've got a hypothetical situation for you. Hypothetical means uh, if this happens, what's going to happen? Okay? So, let's say that uh, angle A is 10 degrees. Angle B, and we put a little circle beside it that means degrees okay angle B is 90 degrees what is angle C if it is a hundred and eighty I need to know who my genius folk are in here who are my genius folks Myron what do you think the answer is 60 60 okay um, that's a good guess on Georgia Milestones, you have to explain your answer in your math portion. So could you give me why you think that? Explain to me in a, a couple sentences. Because I think 10 plus 90 plus 60 equals 180. Okay, his thinking, his logic is correct. What he's doing in his head is he's adding that together plus that to get 180. The problem is his math's not quite right. So if he was in my class, I would have given him half points for that answer because his logic is right, but we need to get our math right. So, um, let's see here. Maya, help me out with the math. 80. 80. Now, because, because 90 plus 10 is 100, and 180 is 100 plus 80. That's exactly right. So what you guys just did, you may have heard this complicated math before, is called algebra. You just did algebra. Give yourself a pat on the back. The level of rigor for the lesson today is something that you probably would find in a, a high school geometry class or an algebra class in terms of the type of math that was involved and the fact that it was real world makes the kids want to learn it. If they know that it is going to be used for something and that they need to know this math skill in particular, it makes it a more powerful, uh, there's nothing more motivating than knowing that you have to know this math thing before you get to use this power saw to cut this thing out. Uh, and I find that by and large students will learn measurement, they'll learn fractions, they'll learn uh, geometry, they'll learn algebra just so that they get to do this real world thing. Show me that you're ready. Now we're going to talk about why you need to know this because there is a reason why you need to know this, okay? So this triangle here, anybody notice something about all the sides on this triangle? What's, what's unique about this triangle and it's very different from this one? What, what's, what's, Nia, go ahead, darling. They all have the same length on each side. That's right. Now, if a triangle has all the same length here, what is, um, what, what can we tell is going on about the angles? Okay, what can we tell about the angles? Uh, Sam? All the angles are um, the same. That's right. All the angles are the same also. Good, Sam. That is very good. Now, Mr. Mather, what's a, what's a triangle called where all of them are the same? Academic rigor is very important to this program and to the curriculum as a whole here. I've done a lot of work with um, vertical alignment and making sure that content wise we are where we need to be for each grade level in terms of looking at what their standards that they're covering in first grade, looking at the standards that they're covering in math, science, social studies, in uh, language arts, all of the different standards and making sure that I'm, I'm helping with those other content areas in uh, this particular class so that it's not done in isolation and the kids can then see the ways that the standards that they're learning in science class are actually applied here and I think that that's important in terms of once again the kids seeing the real world connections but also in terms of them seeing value in what they're learning in the classroom.